Hello, and welcome to another episode of Hacking with Friends. I'm Cody Kinsey, and today we have my friend Tim here. Hello. And we're going to be putting together a Python program in order to access some of the great information that's out there in databases that OSINT researchers love to use during an investigation. So most of the juicy information on the internet isn't available via just a Google search. You actually have to put some information into a database as a query and get a response back in order to access it. You can't just look at the whole database because there's simply too much information in there. So most of the time there's a search portal or something that makes that data really convenient to use. But sometimes there's just nothing there. And we might have a great data source out there. In fact, there's the data.gov initiative that makes a lot of public information really easy to consume. And there's a lot of apps actually that will use this information to build something on top of. A good example I can think of is the city of Los Angeles allows uh, any developer they want to plug into the location of all their city buses. So if you want to develop a route planning application and have it right on top of this application, uh, um, well, it's an API that's providing the data about where all the buses in the city are at any given moment, you can have a highly accurate um, uh, application that's built just using this public data uh, in order to figure out where everything is in real time. So cities and uh, governments are frequently offering up this information to use, and it's really, really useful stuff. But the problem here is not all of them have a uh, just like an interface that's really simple and easy to use if you know what kind of information you're looking for. So really useful information about companies, really really useful information about things like lobbying firms, all this great stuff is there, but there's no search engine to go after it. So what we're going to do today is take one of these data sources and actually build a way of querying it that's a lot more simple than you know just trying to type in a curl request and getting back a ton of data. We're going to structure this as a Python program so we can basically make it so it's as simple to use as possible and get back information from inside this database without needing to go and doing it kind of manually, as I will demonstrate. And it really returns a kind of overwhelming amount of information. So in order to do this, we're going to be using some pretty basic Python. Um, Tim, can you tell me a little bit about what we're going to be doing when we're taking information from an API and kind of just displaying it on the screen using Python? Um, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to when the when the hmm, when the information comes down, it comes down in JSON, and I mm -hmm. believe we use a library that kind of unpacks the JSON and then formats it in a way that we can display. Mm -hmm. And that's that's pretty much all that I think there is. It's just JSON JSON data that we're formatting and make look pretty. Yep. So what we're going to do is we're going to go out here and we're going to pick a data source that looks interesting. We're going to go into the documentation and see what kind of API calls we can make. So we're going to learn how we can query the database and then what kind of information comes back. And after we have a couple example calls, we should have the information we need to build a little Python wrapper for it. So if we're an OSINT investigator or for a hacker that wants to dig around in a database, this is kind of a guide on how to take an API call look at the response and make a structured kind of wrapper for it that's really easy to use. And you could share with all your friends who don't know much about programming uh, if they want access to this information, because it could be really useful. So uh, how much um, experience would you recommend someone have with Python before? Is this a complete beginner's guide? or? I would say if you have a little bit of experience with Pythons, but you've never worked with APIs before, this is a really good example. And if you're just curious about how these API calls work, uh, I would say even a complete beginner should be able to get something out of what's going on today. We're going to be using a couple more sophisticated, well, sophisticated uh, concepts like functions. So if you're a total beginner to programming, then it might be a little bit confusing because we're not going to explain absolutely everything. But in general, what my hope is is that you'll understand how people can develop a very quick, lightweight piece of code that can go in, pull information out from a giant database, and format in a way that looks pretty and useful for a user. OK, cool. cool. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and switch to my screen. And we're going to take a look at some of the data sources that are out here and what they look like in kind of their native form. So I mentioned uh, data.gov. One thing that I really like is the city of LA's data source, so data.lacity.org. But let's just spend a second um, going to some of the very, well, that's an API call. Let's just uh, go to data.gov. And I just want to show you guys some of the great sources that are out here that are available for you to use if you're interested. So you can see there's data topics. I'm going to unblock this website. Um, and there's lots and lots of different things that you can search for. So um, you can see registrations okay. of, of uh, certain chips. Uh, let's see. 
if we can get some of the other catalogs. All right, so we have a lot of filters we can use. We can do it by location, local governments. We can see climate, AARP, energy. And then we also can do the data set type. So um, geospatial, non-geospatial, earth science, um, format. So this is where we can get more specific, show more formats. Hmm. And because we want to work with JSON, because JSON is super easy, we can just select JSON data sources. So if you are just getting started with programming, especially Python, and you want to start making your programs really powerful, one of the first things I was frustrated by as a programmer was, hey, my code doesn't have anything really powerful to work with. Like, What's the most impressive thing I can really do with it? And that's when I learned about APIs. Now, APIs are application programming interfaces. Well, how would you describe them, Tim? Um, that, uh, huh. um... They're basically allow allow you to communicate with another program in like a very simple way. So someone has designed a program to communicate in like a simplified fashion so that you can connect with it and like essentially work with it and grab something out of it. That's very good. So the FMCSA or the Federal Motor Carrier Administration invested millions of dollars in describing how an API works to truckers. And this is this is actually what they did. An API call is like a prayer. It's really, yeah. yeah. You, uh, in what way? Yeah, I, so it's just funny no, that there was a no, federal like, government further... or a funded organization paid someone to come up with an explanation of how APIs work, and it was like a prayer. But who knows? Yes. There so, was no follow up for that. It's like a prayer. You you put it up, and then stuff comes down. You know. Okay. You you sure. put up a prayer. It's answered, and it comes back down. <laughs> you, you get you get what you asked for. That's. It's okay. actually not the worst description of, I mean, a, to, of an API. To be call technical, forever. an API doesn't necessarily have to go to the internet. Like you can yeah. have a, a, between applications on the same device an API. Right. So I am not the Federal Motor Carrier Administration. So my description of an API is basically a language for another system to communicate with uh, a database mm -hmm. or something like that. So it's basically a way that, especially if you're using a mobile application on a phone, that that mobile application can make calls to a server, and the server can understand it and give it back the information it's looking for. And usually, it's trying to be like at least somewhat human readable. But really, the mm -hmm. focus here is making sure that an automated program can send requests to a server and have those requests answered. So it's a language to be used between computers. That's really the fundamental thing with an API. Two computers are communicating between each other. Although we're going to be abusing this a little bit because we're going to be going in and looking at it manually. And then we're going to write our own Python program that's going to speak the same language, or at least use JSON, the same format, in order to uh, do this. So, there's lots of data sets out here. We have these are all um, JSON data sets. We have accidental drug related deaths, oh. local weather archive, uh, diversity index, um, boundaries of neighborhoods Wait, go in up? the city of Chicago, SAT, SAT level, whoa, okay. yeah, SAT level results. So we can also order them by popularity, date added, we uh, relevance. Uh, so these are JSON data sets. Let's say we want um, business. We want business-related statistics or um, business-related data sets. Uh, SBA public data sets uh, pr uh, provides a list of all data sets available in the public data inventory for Small Business Administration. Boring. Retail spending potential, domestic property and casualty insurers. Um, Fire so, incidents. Yeah, so imagine you're an OSINT researcher or you're a hacker and you really need access to a database about a specific industry, and then boom. You find out that the government has been publishing a bunch of uh, documents about that industry. Like that's pretty exciting. But how do we actually get to the information? Um, and you can see these are all wildly different. Um, you can see that some of these are for major cities, so you'll have city data sets. This one's Cook County of Illinois, so you can have like county level data sets. These are all made available to people so that they can understand what's going on in their communities and they have access to this raw data. So we're going to go back to um, the LA City one, because I really like the way that LA does their this, data. This catalog looks pretty well uh, curated. Oh, it's really nice. Yeah, I will say that um, NASA also has some data sets on here that are really cool. So if you're um, if you're interested in, oh, here we are. We're oh, like in. satellite data? Yeah, exactly. So if you're interested in APIs and supercharging your code to suddenly have all this information that you know wasn't there before, you can connect your code to the internet, have it pull down information from an API, and suddenly you have access to lots of information that makes your code powerful. So I really like this stuff because I think it makes coding a lot more fun and exciting. All right, so um, here we are in the city of LA's uh, data catalog. I can go here, and um, Tim was remarking, the categories are a little. Um, <laughs> for a lot, I mean, we're from Los Angeles, so like a, some of them are a prosperous city, a safe city, a well-run city. It's like okay, those are goals. Maybe one, one or maybe two of those are correct. Yeah, maybe. Uh, so if I just type metro, for example, Michael, a metro bike shared uh, trip data. That's interesting. 
Bike lanes. Uh, I'm curious to see if we can see bus information. I believe uh, dash transit. Yeah, there's data sets here, but I think the the other data set is customer also. survey responses. You can see all the people. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think that they're positive. So what no. we're going to focus in on is some of the more popular ones. So we have listings of active businesses. Now I've already written some code for this. Uh, so this is one we can look at first, and then we can choose another data set to go after active kind of secondarily. Okay. So if we click on this, um, we can see there's uh, some information about this. It's how often it's refreshed. It's refreshed monthly, how many views, how many downloads, when it was updated. So it's June 15, 2020. Um, this is all really critical, because if it was uh, updated or if it was created in 2014 and it was never updated, then this is probably yeah. not going to be the most interesting Trash. information. Exactly. So this looks like a living document, or it, it has more information constantly being put into it. So for an investigator or for an OSINT person, or even for a hacker looking to go through a listing of active businesses and try to find more information about each business, goldmine. So how do we work with this? Well, even a programmer doesn't really know how to work with this yet. They need documentation, documentation. to explain this API. So if we look up at the top, we can see there's view data, visualize, export, API. Um, there's uh, some other things we can do. Oh, create visualization in Plotly. I don't even know oh, what that is. That's cool. Um, oh, sorry. This is like cooler than I thought. But yeah, so some of this stuff also can be um, charted or graphed uh, and will automatically um, be able to be uh, have like something generated. Also, some of these data sets aren't strictly just, or some of the results in this data catalog aren't data sets. Sometimes they're filtered views where like, Someone will write a filter for the data set that shows it in a specific way and then puts it on a map or something like that. So there's other way, there's other things besides just raw data sets that are available on um, the LACity.data.gov. So just be aware of that. Or the data.lacity.org. So okay, let's go to the right one. So if we click on API, there's the developer portal and then the API docs, docs, and then the API endpoint. And the API endpoint is really what we're looking for. That's the key to us being able to work with this. If I were to just go into terminal. And then um, can I just curl this? What happens? Boom, look at all that data. So I just like got a giant response back. And it's all formatted disgustingly. Uh, like I've got a bunch of information, but like, you know, do I want to sit and read this? No. Full service restaurants. Yeah, so I can see lots of registered businesses. Like this is cool, I guess, but like, God, this is just like awful. Like, what do I grip through this? Like, I don't want to do that. Like, this is terrible. So how do we make this better? Well, first, we can open it in a browser. And I have a browser extension enabled called, I think it's like Pretty JSON or something like that. And what that will do is make this information more palatable so we can actually see it and make it understandable. So first, let me drop it here. Boom. OK, so now it's compressed this. And I can see how many results I have. So we can see there's a total of 999. Seems arbitrary. Seems like maybe there's actually more, but whatever. And if I start expanding them, I'll actually expand the, the number 0. We can see um, location account, business name, street address, city, zip code, location description, um, primary description, council district, location start date, um, and then different locations. So I have the longitude and latitude of where they're located. Um, computed region, uh, and then some other, other stuff I don't understand. So we start out with something like, OK, I want maybe a zip code. Or OK, I want um, something on this street. And I could theoretically then go through all these records and find every business on the street. Or I could find every uh, business that was registered around the same time. Or I could find, uh, well, basically, I could pivot on any of these data points. I could start with the business name, the business street address. Uh, and then I could go to any other ones and search for, for example, um, information about the district that they're in or information about the building that they're in. I could pivot into another database. So here, I, so let's say that I start out with the name of the business, and I want to go into the building code, see if there's any violations. There's another data set for building codes. So if I wanted to uh, just show you how we would kind of manually pivot around this. And here's some other interesting data sets I found. We have uh, police expenditures. Uh, oh. We have um, clients of registered lobbying firms. So you can see if um, random businesses are lobbying for new laws around the city or lobbying for projects. Registered city lobbyists. LAPD, LAPD calls for service. This is an interesting one. Uh, and this one, if I were to take a look at the API endpoint uh, and just do it here. Oof. OK. 
we can see what a typical call looks like. Um, not a lot of information, but this is just a um, call for service. And we can um, also decode these. Unknown see. trouble. Unknown trouble. Thanks, LAPD. Traffic stop. So very, very short notes, but we could also look up, uh, you know, dispatch time, area occurs, dispatch can, can you look up like those incident numbers and yeah, find out more information about them? Yes, we can. Um, Pacific, dispatch, call time, call type code. Um, so I could just do LAPD call codes. Uh, I don't even know, radio codes and signals. Traffic accident. This scene, this site does not look legit. 902. Uh, person sick or injured. Oh, maybe Corona call. Who knows? Um, anyway. Corona uh, call. Yeah, so we can get information about all this stuff that is you know, potentially really interesting um, by just going to the data sets and looking at what they disclose. So 2020 registered foreclosure properties. We can see mm -hmm. maybe if there's been an acceleration in, in foreclosures if we're doing that sort of information. Uh, so uh, pay, yeah, more payments. Let's see. Uh, if we wanted to pivot, uh, building and safety permit information, building permits. So let's say we'll, uh, and we can also, I should point out, look here and see the difference between these two. So one of them is a data set and the other is a filtered view. So a filtered view means that it's a, a view of a data set that offers a particular perspective, but it's not the same as a data set. Hmm. So, but they're both under a prosperous city. Yes, they are. So we'll hit the API, um, just open it and see what's there. And let's take a look at what a, uh, what a particular record looks like. So, um, all right, wow, we have a lot of information. Um, we can see the uh, address that it's there. That Oh, okay, so we can see the address, we can see the name of the owner. Um, we can see the business name of the owner. Um, we can see lots of different information. We can see a work description of what was done. So really there's, uh, if you're investigating like a particular business and you mm -hmm. wanna see like the history of the building or something like that, you can see how you would you could take like the name of a business, hit one database, find its address, and then turn around and hit a second database and learn a bunch more information about who owns the building, whether there were any renovations, if anything was changed, there were violations, just like it, it keeps going on and on and on in terms of the kind of information you can find. And you can really unravel something by being able to find out all these, or unravel a mystery that is, by being able to tie down specific points of data and make them more accessible. So again, this is not the best way to search an API um, or a, a giant database. You can see that you know we have to go through all these results. So let's go ahead and uh, I think we'll Do switch over. Do they have over. this available, like this data available in like a SQL database? Maybe. Um, there's different sources of data. I know that we've so we're particularly looking for JSON ones today, just because mm -hmm. I, I know that format data uh, better. But on data.gov, um, they do have the ability to search for other ones, and I think SQL is one of the formats. But, then you um, could just select like what what like what's relevant for certain fields that you want to look for. Mm -hmm. And the NASA, I know a lot of the like NASA ones are also um, using SQL uh, databases. Okay, well let's go ahead and start working on this. And um, Tim, you mind if I switch over to your screen? No, that's fine. Cool. All right, so let's start with the listing of active businesses, and we'll take a look at the parameters and see how we can make a call um, to basically do a search. And then what happens when we get that information back? OK. Uh, let's see. All right, so we have all these different fields that we can do searches by. And you can see that these uh, are all clickable. You can click on them to expand them. And it gives you an example. Um, of what a filter looks like. And this is really what we need to do in order to make our Python program. We'll take an, an example of one of these searches that we think is meaningful, and we'll structure our API calls using this. Oh, so it's like the question card, and then like this, uh, the end of the URL right here? Mm -hmm. That's how we'll format our, our calls in Python. Okay. So I think that we'll probably want to do this by business name. Okay, business name. OK, so we have them enter in this thing, and then we just add that string that they typed in into the URL, and then exactly. we call it. Yep. OK, OK, so let's, I'm going to copy that, and then I'm going to use Spider as my Python environment. Cool. And I'm going to be using PyCharm as mine. Oh. 
I'm gonna exit out of these. Okay, so we're gonna need to import the JSON library and the request library, right? Right. So yes, what and why do we need those? Uh, JSON, I'm assuming to um, work with JSON data. Yeah, and format it and basically like go through it and format it correctly, and then request to work directly with API. Send yes. requests. Send requests to the API. So instead of doing a curl request, um, we will be using a request in order to do uh, okay. the communication with the database. Or yeah. So let me create. A new Python file. Cool. So first we do import request in JSON, and then um, we need to get the actual, um, let's see, we need to get the actual query from you know whoever's actually asking us. Mm -hmm. So the first function we can write is probably just to grab the variable we need to search for. And I notice it also seems to be in all caps, but I'm going to test that. Grab the variable, like you mean find the business name the person wants to yeah. look for. Yeah, so we okay. need we need to capture whatever variable um, we're going to submit to um, um, to the API as a search request. Okay. So like that. Uh, def start business name equals input uh, business name. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I could have I could have written the prompt better, but yeah, maybe name of business to search for. That's how I wrote mine. But yeah, that's basically the first thing we have to run. Okay, so once we have that. How do we um, then work with the API? OK, so the next thing we do is once we have what we're going to be searching for, then we need to we need to create our string that we're going to be sending. Mm -hmm. So the I have the sample URL right here. Yep, perfect. OK, so um, from that, we can just do string formatting, right? Yeah. Cool. So let's just do string formatting on the very end of that um, uh, URL. And in fact, we can, we can basically write a really easy search function by using that base URL and then um, doing a string format on it whenever we need to add something to the end. OK, Does that so make sense? I'm going to, yeah, so I'm going to do base URL equals um, that. And then what we're going to do is we're oh, going to do actually, base URL dot format. Yeah, yeah, that works. Um, well, what I was going to say is if we want to make the base URL just um, everything up to the JSON question mark. Then we can make um, the last part of it. We, we can basically search for multiple things. Right now, we're searching for the business name. But if we wanted to search for the year it was registered or something, right. we okay. could, just looking ahead, we could do that. OK. Um, OK, so what we can do is we can just do, for now, we can just do bus name or uh, business. Is there an underscore here? I'll just copy it. Yeah, it's hard to see. There is. There is an underscore. Business name plus. And then is it in all caps? Uh, I believe it is. Take a look at the documentation. Um, take that mm -hmm. uh, and paste it into your browser. My browser? Oh, OK. Uh. OK, now um, type the same. Um, just make labella lowercase or Vince. Or whichever. Yeah. Looks like it has to be. It has to be all caps. So that means that we need to format our string before we do it. So dot upper, I mm -hmm. believe. Dot upper. There you go. So it should be like that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So then uh, maybe let's print it and make sure that it's properly formatted. What do we got? Enter name to search for. Okay. Cool. Boop. Boop. So name. then it's. Oh, oh, you have to do an equal sign. Okay. Cool. All right. Almost there. We there. Go. And then that should be it. Um, do we need to worry about um, this uh, uh, 
uh, modulo sign right here? I think that that's just the space. So that's how it interprets a space. I think if we send a space character, it'll be converted to that. OK, cool. But we'll, we'll try it. OK. Um, so uh, all right, so now we have our URL. Now we need to do the request stuff. So we need to actually send the request and then receive the response. OK. So if uh, I'm referring to my own code here, but uh, what we need to do then. Request.get. Yep, yeah, just do request.get. Request.get. We also need to have a um, variable that we're going to assign the, the um, response to. OK, so I'm just going to do response. Yep, response equals request.get. And then we're going to do the URL. Mm -hmm. OK. And, and then, then just try printing the response. Let's see what it is. Let's see if it works. And then get rid of that last print URL. Uh, we don't need to save it right now. Name of business to search for. Um, uh, oh, copy the other one, uh, the one that we just searched for up above, Vinsanto Abella or whatever. Just copy. Yeah. Nice. Name request is not defined. Oh, is it uh, requests or request? Oh, I just have to put an S right here. OK, let's redo that. Response 200. Well, that, that means it worked, but we didn't get a thing. Hmm. Oh, we're printing the response. OK. Um, JSON uh, dot loads dot text. Um, JSON dot loads response dot text like that. Let's see. Answer. Let's see if that works. Same person. Wait, is that the name? Hey, we OK, we got a response. OK, cool. Cool. So now we are at the point where we can have a search menu uh, where basically it asks us what which business we want to search for. In fact, let's let's see if our um, formatting works. Do, run it again, but this time do it lowercase. OK. So Because if it comes out that way, I'd say it's even better than the original. I'm just going to put the last A. Yeah. Hey, that cool. would have failed if we did it just through the browser. Pretty cool. All right, so the next step of this is going through and actually making this look a little nicer. Yes. So currently, we are just looking at the JSON response, and it, it's kind of jumbled up. So maybe we could format this in a way that's um, displaying the key information we want to show about this business in a way that's using string formatting. So what I did here was I went through and I used string formatting to uh, basically be able to uh, use a JSON response to then parse things out and be able to uh, just kind of like make it um, uh, make it actually um, yeah like make more sense. Okay. So in the case that we're working with here, we can see that there is uh, a couple different responses that are nested, and this is the way that we'll access them. Um, when we want to see, for example, the business name, it's it's saved basically underneath the the tag. Um, business name. Mm -hmm. um, so when we're looking to make this information a little bit more broken out, we have to address it that way. So that's why we're working with JSON, because it's super easy to uh, basically have JSON um, like in Python just made super, super clear with string formatting. Yeah, so will the JSON library format it for us? Um, what do you mean? Like, will the JSON library, instead of giving us this whole thing with all of the like syntax, will it just, can it just list all the things pretty? No, 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 no. So we have to tell it what we want to see. Hmm, OK. Yes. So the way that we access it is, um, for example, if we want to, uh, so we right now have answer. But if we do answer and then we use a bracket and then um, business name. Oh, OK, gotcha. Um, try that. And let's see. I think we might have to use quotes around. Yeah, we have, have to use a single quote around it, but business name. Name, OK. Uh, let's see if that works. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to just make it return like a, a single result or something and just paste. The list indices must be integer or, hmm. Um, so OK, let's switch over to my code for a second. So this is what I did before. I uh, had a URL that was formatted. Um, we did. We got the response back from it. 
And then I also uh, basically looked for anything from the response that matched the text I was searching for. And then those matches I went through and I addressed them like this. So format uh, dot format is to basically insert it in here. And then matches I. Oh, yeah, put I. Put I first. Like that? Yeah, something like that. Um, so, well, no. Look at look at on my screen right here. Matches dot I, uh, matches bracket I bracket uh, owner name. So if we're trying to only display a single um, like a single uh, variable, like that. Do we want to show your screen? Yeah, we are on my screen. Uh, oh yeah, we are. Okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So uh, if we want to show a single like variable from the JSON response, this is how we do it. We have to have an I first and then whatever variable we want to show. So go ahead and, oh, and put okay. the I, and then put the business owner again, or our business, whichever variable we're going for. Owner name mm -hmm. or business, what were we going for? Cool. Yeah, go ahead and run it again. OK. I is not defined. Uh, He's not in the for loop. You you don't need to be in a for loop. Um, oh right right okay so uh, yeah that's a good point so put um, zero instead because basically the the I is addressing. Oh I see okay yeah so yeah, yeah. then just paste again here owner name so just make sure that um, when you got the response back what did it look like like literally like literally exactly. Let's go up and yeah. check. Um, Like this. So we can do any of these. So let's just do mailing, yeah, location, description, mailing address, whatever. Mailing address. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Hold on, I don't know what, what's going on. Let's just copy that. Whoa. There, there we go. go. Okay, oh my god. Um, so the response that we got here was specific. Instead of dumping all the information, we wanted a single variable, and that's exactly what we got back. So let's say we want this to be formatted now. So. Um, we have print answer, blah, 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 blah. Let's do print, and then the business is located at, and then format that string so that it displays the result we're getting just dumped right here. So it should read, the business is located at, and then you know whatever the address is. Hmm. That sounds a little, that feels a little verbo verbose to me. However you want to. I just want to show, uh, you don't need to do at. No, just do string formatting. So um, two curly braces. Yeah, yeah, you got it. You got it. Cool. That looks good. OK, awesome. Uh, yeah, I think I just need to do another one. There we go. I'm going to make sure that. OK, so, at, yeah. all right, so this is our first successful result. Basically, what we've done here is we're calling an API, and we're saying, hey, this is the business name we want to search for. And also, if we're using mixed caps, then it'll this uh, script will correct it for us. And it's coming back and saying, OK, the business is located here. So if we're an investigator and we're looking to start pulling out information, we've basically identified our first data point. And as a programmer, we can also basically decide here what we want the person who's searching to see. So there's lots of information, but is all this information actually relevant? Some of this information could just be indexing information for you know, what, when this was filed or what number internally this is. So if we go back to the JSON documentation, or even if we just look at the call here, we can see all the different things we can pivot on and respond to uh, and basically uh, populate the the search response. So, is there anything from the JSON response that looks um, like unuseful? Um, whatever NAICS is, uh, North American Industry Classification. Oh, industry system. code. Well, it might be interesting, but it's probably not something <clears throat> we want to be able to search on. Um, 
there seemed to maybe be some uh like okay for zip code and mailing zip code like what's the difference between those two um uh between the their business address and their mailing address it, it could be like their whoever handles their paperwork is at their mm. mailing address but can you go to scroll up a little bit um can you go to uh dba name so the dba name is a doing business as name so um if uh Basically, if we are looking for like maybe a business that has a different name it's operating under or something, that could be really, really interesting. Um, so that could be something. But then again, it's also not returning every response. So if you can you look at the JSON response? Uh, yes. You mean just do this, right? Yeah, exactly. Just a dump. OK, so um, DBA name. Right, so OK, it is it is actually returned as like a, a pretty standard thing. We can see that the the business name is spring, uh, Springboard Nonprofit cons uh, Customers Consum Credit Consumer Man Credit Manager. Consumer Credit Manager. But the DBA name is different. It's Money Management International. International. So if we're an investigator, we're someone who wants to find out like who's behind a business, then this could be the clue that we need to do it. So let's say that we want to add this into our um, script. How would we add this variable? You want to search specifically for DBA? No, name? I want to add it to the response that's already there. What do you mean you want to add it to the response? So we already have a response that we get back when we run a search based on our Python script we just wrote. Uh -huh. So instead of just coming back with the address, now I would also like it to come back with the, oh, with okay. the DBA. Well, yeah. Um, well, you'd have to see if it exists first. Right, right. So, but if assuming it exists, you could also, you know, you, I mean, the, it, the easiest way to do it is just print another line and say DBA name. It's probably just <clears throat> that, right? Mm -hmm. OK, so but this, uh, of course, again, this will only this will give an error if it doesn't have a DBA name. Right. Um, but uh, so let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. Um, and if there is no DBA name, we can also do, we can put in a variable that just says, if um, this variable equals false, or if there was nothing returned, then say something else. Do we want to use this name? Sure. OK, so that way we know it'll work. Well, actually, oh, sure. Let's do one that we know works, and then let's try the other one and see what happens if it doesn't work. Um, list index out of range. Hold on. Mm, does it not have a mailing address? It looks. Oh, it doesn't. OK, cool. So we ran into our first problem. In this case, we got an index out of range because one of our variables came back with nothing in it. So this is one of the problems where if we start writing a program for an API and we don't always get a response back, that can break our code. So how would we fix that, um, aside from the way I just suggested? Um, well, you could use an if loop, or you could use a try loop. Yeah, a try loop is good, or, or an if loop. Um, so I would just say if whatever variable equals false, like if we didn't get something back, or if, if this is false, if there's nothing in it, then say something else. Um, OK. Um, or I don't know. The, how Would it come back as false, or would it just come back with the error code or the error message? Um, it would come. I mean, there would be nothing in the JSON format. So when you tried to address it, um, uh, then there would be nothing there. So it's a, it's a key value, because you're calling a key that doesn't exist. Yeah, I I got I get that, but uh, I, how would I say if DBA equals false? It wouldn't be false. It would just be not. It wouldn't exist. Python can, yeah, yeah. If it doesn't exist, it's false. So if you, I say if not, answer uh, zero DBA name. Yeah, let's try it, um, and then print something to let us know. So if answer. Well, since that one came back false with the mailing address, let's do that. OK, cool. So this is how we'll try to fix our code and make it so that when we get a response back that doesn't include all the information, we uh, don't have our code crash on us.
Okay, so it should be something like that. Yeah. I can't go this anymore. Okay, so if answer mailing address, it prints it. Mm -hmm. Else, no mailing. It just says no mailing address. Okay, let's go back and Money Management International. Uh, yeah, one spider. Okay. Hopefully, it should work. Nope, it didn't work. Hmm. Oh, I know why it didn't work. It's it, because it's the DBA name. So see how we use the base URL plus business name? Mm -hmm. um, this was DBA name. Ah. Like that. OK. So let's just do the same uh, if loop for the DBA. So if answer, answer 0, um, DBA name. This code is extremely sloppy, I must say. <laughs> All right, okay, so let's go to, what was our original business? Um, Vincenzo Labella. Yeah. So it should come back with key, key error, error DBA, DBA name. name. See, it, do it doesn't come out with false, it just says key error. So we well, need to put that in a wait. Where where are you calling it? Um, if, line twenty seven. Can I see that? Yeah. If answer. Yeah, it doesn't come what up if, with false. Because uh, I've I've used if there's nothing in it, it comes up false. I've used that in Python. No, 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 it's not that there's nothing in it. It's that the thing doesn't even exist. Right, it's and that's not the same the... as there's not being anything by that key name. So if you try to call a key name and it's and it doesn't exist, it's false. Mm, that's not the same thing. Uh, okay. Well, how would you so fix it? I would I've, say because I've used that before. I would say try answer. Um, uh, what's the result? Except. Yeah, except. Okay. Yeah, you can do a try except. Since we're doing a try, we don't need the uh, the condition. Let's see. Okay, there no, DBA no, no DBA name. Perfect. All right, so it works. All right, so that's an example of how we can basically manage a failure. So if we actually manage to uh, get a piece of data back that's not consistent and it's breaking our code, we can go ahead and make it so it's more simple um, by just having a failover uh, idea for how to deal with it. And this will break a lot of just simple scripts to call an API. We really have to plan for a couple things. The first one we just fixed, and then the second one, probably should have fixed in the beginning, but what if we have more than one result for a search for business? Um, well, that would be the zero, I'm assuming. Right. So right now, we're just picking the first result. But let's assume that we get more results back. Is there a way that we could go through those results and while we're printing this out? Yeah, we would say if a length of answer is greater than one, then if it is, it pr pr prints multiple out. So see how mm -hmm. answer is a list, right? Which you can tell by this bracket. Mm -hmm. So, but obviously its length is only one because we're just using the zero index. Mm -hmm. But as multiple, it'll come up with length. It'll come up with uh, something greater than one. Okay, let's we try it then. That and then we'll run a search that has more than one result. Okay, you find a business that will have more than one result, and I'll write the code. Uh, okay. Um, premium. <laughs> okay. That's it. That's the whole search. All right. If um, if answer. If length of answer uh, greater than one, for now, let's just say, um, since I'm, can I just say there's more than one result? Or do you want me to do for more than one? Actually, I'm going to do what you did. You did a for loop, right? Yep. For, um, I did for an I in range and the length of matches. Oh, yeah. That was two. Hmm. Um, I don't want to have to retype all of this. All 
All right, and really, again, what we're doing here is we're trying to make it so that if we get more than one response back, we're not just looking at the first one. Because so far, we've just been playing around with how we can get information out of this data source. But now we're going to take the step of actually trying to make it a little bit more usable. Even if we're printing you know, more basic information from each result, I still want to show how we can go through and show the result of an uh, API query that has more um, JSON results than just one. All right, so let's see if this, well, it's all like skewed. All right, let's see if this works. Invalid in text. Line, line 24. 24. Item. Oh, 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 I'm just going to do this. OK, so basically, if it gets us, gives, if it is, there's more than one result, it will print the business name of all the results. OK. Um, and in fact, we shouldn't. We don't even need to do that because even if there's one result, it'll still print it. Okay. Okay. So that should work, hopefully. So we're gonna do premium. You said premium. Nope. There's no businesses in Cal in Los Angeles called premium. I guess not. Type, all right, city. The word city. All right. Does it have to be an exact match? Try city business. Sit business. What? Um, Invalid syntax? How? In 22? Oh, no, no, no. I, I typed it into the console. Ah. City business. Nope. No results. I feel like something might be wrong. Let's take something that we know is going to work. OK, let's do that. Yeah. Make sure, yeah, we didn't, I didn't mistype something. Oh, it came up. Hmm. OK. Mm, what do you, what do you think would be? Um, let's do, um, uh, would, would chains work? Yes. Like McDonald's? Yeah. OK, let's just do McDonald's. Sure. There are no McDonald's in the city of Los Angeles. That can't be correct. <laughs> um, I'm just going to do this. Faux king. <laughs> yeah, no. No, no, no. Hmm. Mm. What are we missing? So for item and answer, print the business located at format item um, mailing address. So we're. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so we're iterating over the item. The item, and it did work for the first one. Usually the format needs to have like item in brackets, but it didn't seem to matter the first time. What do you mean the item in brackets? Right here. Oh, uh, uh, mm. like that? Like usually it wouldn't be like the no, number. No, because we did the item for item and answer. So that's so item is essentially answer bracket zero. Oh, with it's the and same it thing. Brackets. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then uh, that should work. But uh, one way to test it is to just do the, the API call manually. So let's debug our code by just um, going back and doing it in the browser. So what do we want to what do we want to put in the browser? Okay, go to the API documentation. And then go to the um, business name example, mm -hmm. and then right there. Yeah, we did. This is essentially the same thing. Yeah. So then let's try one of the ones that we um, weren't getting results with. Well, I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, like one of the ones that didn't have any results when. Oh, we did. oh, yeah. Gotcha, so let's gotcha. see. If, okay. Let's see, like what? So we tried what? McDonald's, for example. Equals. Cat has to be in all caps. McDonald's. Nope, nothing. Hmm. What about just McDonald's? So again, some of this is also figuring out how the code works, and some of this is figuring out how the API works. And here we can see, let's see, simple filters. If you scroll down a little bit, let's see. Uh, oh, OK, also click on um, the text data type. So reading the documentation will definitely help. 
Uh, so we can do alphanumeric is null distinct like. Oh, OK, let's do like. Allows for substring searches. OK, so how do we um, add this into our on it. query? OK. Um, there's uh, where job titles. OK, where job titles like. Um, I don't like. Click on that. I just want to see the example in the browser. Oh, I guess it doesn't do it in the browser. Hmm. Okay, let's try let's try that. Okay. So let's go back to our thing and what we want to well, do. Well let's try it in the browser first just to make sure it works. Okay. Um or business name like uh let's do that and see if it works. Let's go back to the documentation. Where job titles like do we have to put these things inside of it? I don't know. Um, hit that in the um, in the browser and see what it looks like. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then uh, let's just substitute out um, our our requests. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. But so we need the pers the modulo twenty five, modulo twenty five. Well, let's let's just try it by just dropping it in right now. So we have that available there. We'll take. Um, everything where business name like um, what was it modulo 25 25 and then let's do Bella hmm so what I want to do is I want to just take um, business name, like all this stuff, mm -hmm. copy it. Mm -hmm. Over here, we have a working example. I want to just paste this right here. Sorry. And then how did we, how did we bridge this one? I think the where might have been important. It was like this. Hmm. Okay. So we, yeah, so we basically, what we're working on here is being able to take a specific data type and modify the way that we're searching with it. So we're starting to get into some stuff that's a little oh. bit more advanced. Oh, oh, oh. Let me try um, name. Dollar sign question mark dollar sign where equals There we go. Oh my god, it works. Okay, cool. Oh. Huh. Okay, okay. I think Wait, the dollar sign where is uh where equals was the key. Okay, so now, oh my god, let's search for McDonald's. <laughs> okay. Or actually just Vincent. Um if you just get rid of the last part, Vincento. Let's just do Vincent, yeah. Vincent, yeah. We should get multiple. Huh. Interesting. So could we change that to something that there's, um, hmm. Well, let's do this, make sure it works. Because if it's like, that yeah, I don't know something's wrong because because if we remove this, obviously it should still give us Vincenzo Labella. Right, because we're looking for a substring. Yeah. Right. But it it's not doing that. Hmm. All right. Well, for now we have most of what we were looking to do happening. Let's go back to our code for a second. <sighs> All right. So 
This was our result. We took this data source. Uh, we made it so we can query uh, to find, let's say, the address of a business. And then we also did a little bit of debugging to make sure if we got a particular variable we were looking for, like the business name or something back, uh, that if there wasn't something there, that it didn't crash our code. So let's say yeah. that a particular business didn't register a mailing address or something, or there's that piece of data is missing. That will just crash our code if we don't have this uh, little like try accept. Uh, yeah. Is that what we end up using? Uh, well, we did end up using that. But to mm -hmm. simplify our our for loop, I got rid of that, oh, okay. just so we could test our for loop. I think we got a little too in the weeds with uh, how to manipulate the, uh, the API e exactly. But I think the main takeaway is that um, it basically gives you a JSON string that you can format as like a list. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's what we're um, probably going to come back and touch on this again and make a tool that can do a little bit more advanced searches or even take information from one API and then go search for another one. So if we were going to do a search where we got back the uh, business address and then we went and did a property search and found all the records on that property, that would be an example of how you could start stringing these together and make something a little bit more advanced then your average Python script is just going in and pulling back an answer. But either way, today we've shown off a couple of different ways you can get started accessing JSON data from a public API. And again, there are lots of APIs out there for you to get started on. So if you're curious about how to start doing this yourself, you should go out and try something on data.gov or what was it? Data.lacity.org. <laughs> Cool. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us today. A big thank you to Veronis for making this stream possible. If you're interested in the way that hackers get caught breaking into systems, you should check out the Cyber Attack Lab because it's a great example of how Veronis works. And if you want to learn more about PowerShell and Azure and specifically scripting things with uh, PowerShell, then you should check out the Active Directory PowerShell uh, workshop, uh, which we will try to link as well. Cool. Well, thank you for uh, hacking with us today and writing this Python script, uh, Tim. And oh, thank uh, you for having me, Cody. Yeah, yeah. We will see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Bye.